Scientists say planet Earth is heating up much faster than previously predicted. The findings are in a report in the journal Oxford Open Climate Change, and it is a long report. <laughs> yeah, do you read it? Do a little light well, reading? Well, I didn't, but our next guest did, and apparently it's 800 pages long. It's yeah, very so long. Yeah, so let's bring in Marina now, and you've uh, been looking over it. You're an actual climate scientist. Uh, you've done a lot of really interesting work, so break it down for us. What did this report find? So basically, it says that the models aren't working as efficiently as they should. So they used paleoclimatology, which is really, really cool. It's able to look at our history with its ebbs and flows because we know we've had previous warming trends, previous cold trends, and it's like a matter of checks and balances. So they're saying the models aren't ingesting how quickly the ice sheets are melting, and it isn't ingesting how the fresh water moving into salt water is having an effect on the earth. So like we like to balance our checkbooks, I don't know if anyone does that actually in writing anymore <laughs> like me, but we like to balance our checkbooks and the climate needs to be balanced as well. And so they're finding that it is rapidly warming. Now, scientists all across the globe know that this is happening. It's a scientific problem. And so what we need to do is we need to adapt to it. And I think California is doing a great job and should be a model for other states, for other places all across the globe to use that so that we can adapt to what's happening because that is a possibility. We can make the changes that are necessary to adapt to what's happening on the globe. And I think that even though it was a very extensive report, it gave a good message that we need to make the changes now because changes take a while. Right. And if we can make the changes now, then all of us can help this this planet and we can move forward together. Well, there are a lot of climate deniers too, right? So it's interesting to look at the, the ebbs and flows and say, no, mm -hmm. this is an anomaly. This isn't something that we've seen before. Exactly. And it's really cool. They can take ice cores out of Antarctica and Greenland and be able to basically get a picture of what our planet looked like millions of years ago and use tree rings and use fossils of plants and vegetation to see what it was like and then to be able to compare that to what happens when you put humans into the mix. And so if you're running the state of California, let's say, as a model for the rest of the country, what changes are you putting into place right now that maybe all of us could could follow up on and do? Well, we all know that emissions are yeah. a big problem, carbon mm -hmm. emissions, and so making that less of a footprint. Also, people are starting to build larger seawalls. They're starting to move away from where sea level rise is happening, even in some locations across the world. And they're putting these plans into effect because it's not easy to put up a, a larger seawall, or it's not easier to put boulders up along the ocean and I've got a great sea level rise uh, package coming out in a couple of weeks that's going to explain new technology that's happening to be able to make that better and improved. Oh that's very cool. I think we have a new animation showing yes, some we of do. those uh, changes in sea rise. Can you explain kind of what this all means? So this is uh, from the Surface Water and Ocean Topography Satellite from NASA, and basically it is showing the changes in the global composite of sea surface heights. So what is that? Look at the red, orange, yellow, and that shows you where the ocean heights are higher than they should be, oh. higher than average. So that basically means that it could be warmer water in those areas, and you can see it's pretty global. There's a lot of yellows, a lot of reds, a lot of darker colors, and that's because warm water actually naturally expands, so it, it gets bigger and it swells, that's the best word to use, as it pushes through. And so because of that sea level rise, we're having to adapt. We're having to change the way that we live. You know, half of the world's population, three billion people, live near the coastline. And so that's a lot of people to be affected by the sea level rise. So that's why I'm saying if we make the changes now, then we're able to adapt to them and we'll be able to it move kind on. Of hits home in a different way yeah. when you see mm -hmm. it in exactly. the room like that. It's mm -hmm. pretty scary. Well, that's, you know, it's interesting because we've covered several, you know, other natural disasters, right? So I think about hurricanes that I've covered in the past, where you have sometimes the convergence of those king tides and a hurricane. So it's not only that the sea level's rising, but as climate changes and these storms get bigger, I mean, there are communities that can be completely flooded. And that's what's so interesting about this year, and we're going to have a winter weather report coming out here for Southern California, but like you said, in conjunction with king tides and El Nino, but if you notice on that global map, there's a lot of areas in the mid-latitudes that actually have that red and that orange. We've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. So usually with an El Nino year, you look at the difference in temperature between the tropics and the mid-latitudes, and that creates a stronger winter weather forecast for us. But we've never seen a warm and a warm colliding. So mm -hmm. it's either 
going to create a very juicy atmosphere. So we'll get more increased storms or it might inhibit us from getting a lot of those storms moving in with that Aleutian low, that Alaskan low that usually slides in. So it's going to be very interesting to see how everything plays out, but we're going to keep you posted and have a lot of great information for you coming could up. Could go two very different ways. <laughs> yes. Like. Okay, we're looking forward to that. Oh, I could be talking to you all day, so yeah. thank you. We appreciate you breaking thank that you. down thank for you. us. Now we want to get a look at our next weather with Paul Deano and... Uh, Boy, I don't know. I'm just, I'm fascinated by all this stuff. It's, it's amazing how we can peer back so far and now peer into the future so far. And at the same time, we also need to tackle what's going on for the next few days. we got to plan your day today. And there's some excellent reporting which has been coming out talking about how all this stuff in the past, how we can use that to help predict what's going to be happening in the future. Here's what's going to be happening over the next couple months, which is a lot. We're talking about rain and are we going to have a wet winter? These are the averages. And in November... The rainfall totals begin to increase on average, almost an inch of rain, not much, but more than the past several months. By December, we're up to two and a half inches of rain. January and February, each average more than three inches of rainfall.